Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Secret Art of Parent Communication, sponsored by ESGI, Educational Software for Guiding Instruction. I'm Rochelle, and I'm excited to be your host today for today's webinar, featuring one of our ESGI friends, Vanessa Levin. Also on the call with me today are Jenna and Melinda from ESGI. We will be answering all of your questions. Vanessa Levin is a passionate advocate for high-quality early childhood education. She believes in the power of hands-on learning and strives to make learning fun for every student and teacher. Vanessa enjoys sharing her passion for early childhood with teachers through her popular website, Pre-K Pages, and in person at teacher conferences and on-site school district trainings. Vanessa is also the author of A Fabulous First Year and Beyond, a practical guide for pre-K and kindergarten teachers, available on Amazon. She enjoys creating helpful, time-saving teacher resources, such as her Family Literacy Night kits, classroom newsletter templates, electronic report card, and more. All of her resources are designed to align with current best teaching practices and are available on her website, www.pre-kpages.com. We here at ESGI are thrilled that so many of you registered to learn with Vanessa today. Thanks to all of you who are dedicated to helping children and families. We'll get started with Vanessa's presentation titled The Secret Art of Parent Communication in just a moment. But first, we have a few housekeeping details for you. You will receive a certificate of attendance for attending today's webinar live. Check your email inbox for your certificate in a few days. For better audio and video quality, close all other applications and tabs you might have open. If you are having any audio or video issues, try refreshing or changing your browser. Be sure the sound on your computer is turned up and not muted. We will be utilizing the chat box feature that's located on the side of your screen. Let's try it out by typing in the chat box where you're from. Wonderful. Looks like we have a great crowd today from all over the country. Now I will turn it over to Vanessa. Let the learning begin. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be here. I wanted to kick off to let, let, you, let you know about a special gift that we have for you on the live broadcast today. We will be giving away five prize packages, not five prizes, but five prize packages. Each package contains one free year of ESGI, which is a super helpful resource that can help you save 400 hours a year assessing and planning for your class. One ESGI t-shirt, one $75 gift certificate to my store at Pre-K Pages, and one copy of my book, A Fabulous First Year and Beyond. So stay tuned and we're going to get to those prizes later in the presentation. So I just want to let you know that I am so passionate about parent communication. It is a topic I'm super excited to share about, and I'm going to be sharing some of my best tips here with you today. And when you registered, some of you um, asked about, um, about me, and I totally think that you're on the right track with that. It's so important to know who the person speaking to you is so you have a frame of reference. I sat in so many professional development sessions over the year, years, and I often wondered things like, has this person really ever taught before? Do they know what it's like to walk in my shoes? Can they give me any practical advice I can take back and use in my classroom right now, or will it be all theory? So here you go. I'm Vanessa Levin, and I spent 20 years teaching pre-K and kindergarten in public programs primarily on Title I campuses serving at-risk in English language learner populations. I've provided professional development to teachers just like you at many national educational conferences such as NACI, I Teach Kindergarten, and Frog Street Splash. 
more than 20,000 teachers download and use my resources in their classroom every single year. So here's what we're going to do first. This is what I want you to do. During this presentation, I want you to be thinking about the one thing that you can look for and take away. Look for that one gold nugget that's going to change the way you communicate with parents and get them to work with you. So I want you to be looking for that while we're talking today, and I'll ask you about it a little bit later. So here we go. My goal for you today is for you to come away with amazing tools that you can use to really connect and collaborate with the parents of the students in your classroom. And some of you in the questions, you had some really, really good questions, and I'll be answering a lot of those during the presentation today. But some of you asked in advance if you can still use these ideas if you've already started school, and the answer is absolutely yes, absolutely. It is never too late to try something that will improve parent communication and strengthen the home school connection. One thing that I learned the hard way when I first started teaching was that I was totally unprepared to work with parents. Who feels the same way? Type that out in the chat box if you feel like that, yes or no. This was not something that I was ever taught in college. It's hard. It's not about spending weeks decorating your classroom. Doesn't that classroom look pretty? Um, and then smiling and hoping for the best. Parent communication is an art form, and that is why I named the presentation the way I did. If you get parent communication wrong, you will be fighting an uphill battle all year long. So let's get started with some of the facts. I always like to do a little research up front. Um, and here we have three facts about parents um, that I want us all to be on the same page before we get started. And the three facts are that family is the single most influential factor in a child's development. And if you've been at this rodeo before, I can say that because I'm from Texas, um, if you've been in, at this rodeo before, you've taught before, you know that the family is so influential in a child's development. And parents must, must, must be equal partners in their child's education. And we all know from working with um, different populations that some parents are too involved and some parents are not involved and not enough. So it's a fine line. It's a balance. We have to balance that. We have to be equal partners. And most importantly, learning does not stop outside the classroom. We know that kids are always, always learning. It's not just those hours they spend in the classroom with us. So it's so important that we take a team approach with parents to benefit all children. So here we go. This is a problem that some of you may have had or may have noticed before. Have you ever had kids or parents who cried on the first day? Anybody ever have anyone who's cried on the first day? Maybe it was you. <laughs> All right, I thought so. Listen, kids and parents have never met you, most likely. I mean, if you're in the same building, you know, sometimes you get to know families and things. But generally speaking, kids and parents have never met you. They may have never even heard of you before. It's fear of the unknown. We all have fear of the unknown, and that is why we have school mares. Have you ever had a school mare? It's just like a nightmare only it happens just before school starts and it happens to teachers. It's called the school mare. And um, it's fear of the unknown, okay? So our imaginations run wild. To kids and parents, you could be the Wicked Witch of the West or Cruella de Vil for all they know. So that's the problem. We're all on the same page. I'm preaching to the choir. You can solve this problem with this very simple tip sending a welcome postcard. Yes, I just said the word postcard. Those little pieces of paper that your grandma used to send you when she went on vacation. This is such a novelty these days, it will instantly strike a chord with all parents. Nobody gets real mail. My own family members don't even send me Christmas cards anymore. And my mom is listening. Mom, I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> So you will be amazed at how effective this little tiny piece of paper can be in improving parent relationships. I'm not kidding. It really can. 
by sending a postcard with your smiling face. Okay, if kids and parents have never met you and never heard of you, put your face on the postcard. So there's some sense of familiarity. I know none of us like to see our picture, okay? That's not even a picture of me on the screen. I know you don't like it, but you, you will do it because it's what's best for children. Send a postcard with your smiling face so parents will be able to let go of some of that fear of the unknown. You don't have horns and you don't have fangs, so they will let go of some of that fear. Kids will become familiar with what you look like and they'll see a familiar face on the first day of school. It doesn't matter if you started school last week or two weeks ago, or even before that, bless your heart, um, you can still send a postcard to every fam family in your class, and it's still going to be just as effective. If you haven't started yet, your postcard can say something like, I'm so excited to have Elsa in my class this year, and I'm looking forward to an amazing year of fun and learning. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, um, don't feel the need to write down all of these scripts I'm going to be sharing with you throughout the webinar. I made you a cheat sheet, okay? And after the live webinar, those of you that are attending live, you will be emailed this cheat sheet that has all the scripts in it, all right? Yes, yeah, so you can thank me later, okay? So that's what you can say if you haven't started school yet, okay? If you have already started school, that's okay. Send out your postcards with a message that says something like this. We're having a great time in pre-K or kindergarten or whatever you teach so far. Elsa loves painting and drawing, and she has made so many new friends. This is all about less fear and less stress for everybody. If parents are less stressed, then kids are less stressed. Relaxed kids and relaxed parents means less separation anxiety. And you can make your own postcards. It's super easy. And in the cheat sheet, I have included the dimensions for U.S. postcards. There are certain standards that you have to follow. So I've included those in the cheat sheet. I just open up a Word doc and um, just make make one really quick. I've also used places like Vistaprint before, and then you take them to your local copy place and have them done there. Um, it's super easy, I promise. And one of the reasons that we want to send a postcard is because parents have learning different learning styles. Just like the kids in your class, parents have different learning styles as well. So for a parent who is a visual learner, this postcard might resonate more. Some parents might throw it in the trash, and that's okay, because that's the cost of doing business. You can't hit everybody with everything, but you can get some. So for visual learners, the postcard is going to work really, really well. Okay. So here's another problem. Have you ever had parents who were a nervous wreck about sending their child to school for the first time? I know you have. And I know there are parents who drop them off at the curb and peel rubber out in the parking lot. That's another presentation for another day, okay? But there are some parents who are a nervous wreck, and most parents are nervous about the first day, especially in preschool and kindergarten. And they have lots of questions, questions they're losing sleep over. They're stressed out over these things. Like, did I buy the right backpack? I can't tell you how many times parents have asked me that one. Can my child bring his blankie to school? What if my child cries? And a million other questions. So here's how we can get over that, or one of the strategies. You're going to call every family. Okay, and some of you may not be into phone calls. I know it's very passe these days, but guess what? It is a strategy you can use to connect to parents and increase communication. So a personal phone call from the child's teacher is going to be huge for some parents. Will some of them ignore your call? That Yes, they will, and that's okay. They may not like to talk on the phone or it may not be their learning style. It's okay. But the ones who do answer will be so grateful that you took the time to call them. And for those parents who are auditory learners, they like to talk, or they have a million questions, this one phone call could make the world of difference to them 
and to you. It's just one more personal touch that will help you connect with parents and create that strong working relationship that's going to get your year off started on the right foot. Okay, so I've talked about calling every parent, and here's the question I get asked most often. Are you ready? What do I say? Okay, and listen up, guys. I'm going to be giving you the exact words that you can use when you make these calls. And don't worry, it's all included in the cheat sheet that's coming your way after the live call. If you're on the live call right now, you're going to get this in your email shortly, soon. I don't know when, but soon. Okay. So here we go. Even if you already, already started school, calling every family on the phone and telling them how grateful you are to have Elsa in your class or whoever. Can you tell I just watched Frozen again? Um, it's going to make a world of difference. So you're going to point out something that you notice specifically about your child, and it's going to make the call even more powerful. So for those of you who have already started school, you might say something like this. Our year is off to a great start. Zeke has made a lot of new friends, and I've noticed he really enjoys building in the block center. Has Zeke told you how much he likes school? And now you're opening it up for them to talk to you. So that's what you do if you've already started. If you haven't started yet, you're going to want to have a script prepared uh, for leaving voicemail messages for those parents who don't answer the phone. And this is the script that I use, and this is the script that works for me. You can tweak it for your own use. Hi, it's Mrs. Levin from XYZ School. I'm so excited to have Elsa in my class this year. I'm calling to invite you to our open house on Friday night at 6 p.m. I can't wait to meet you. We're going to have snacks and door prizes, and I'm going to answer all of your questions. I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 6 p.m. Bye. Short and sweet. That's your voicemail. So what happens if they do answer the phone? Ah, don't freak out. Don't freak out. I have a script for that, too. Here's how I start a live call with a parent. Hi, this is Mrs. Levin from XYZ School, and I'm calling because Elsa is going to be in my class this year, and I want to invite you to our open house on Friday night. Is this a good time for you to talk? Okay, you always want to ask them if this is a good time for them to talk, because it may not be. They may be in the car. They may be at Walmart. Ask them if this is a good time. If they say no, ask them what time is better and then call them back at that time. So let's assume they say yes. So then I go on and I say, great, is Elsa excited about school? I let them talk. Great, we're, we're having a conversation back and forth. Wonderful, I can't wait to meet you and Elsa Friday at Open House. It starts at 6 p.m. We're going to have snacks and door prizes, and Elsa can come and meet some of her new classmates. And I'll also be answering any questions you may have. All right, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking they're going to keep you on the phone for an hour and you've got 24 kids in your class. That's 24 hours. Well, no worries because I've been there and done that and here's how you get them off the phone. So here's the script that I use for that and this will be in the cheat sheet that's coming your way, so don't worry. But here's what I say to end a call with a parent who wants to continue talking and I don't have time. I say, I'd love to chat and answer more of your questions, but I have to call all the other families now and I'm on a tight schedule. I'll have more time to answer all your questions at Open House on Friday. See you soon. Bye-bye. End. Okay? Uh, so you're telling them what they need to know, that you, you'd love to talk with them more, and you want to answer their questions, but you're busy. So you're going to have all, the, they're going to have your undevoted attention on Friday at open house, okay? So that's how you end a live call. And all of those scripts that I just gave you are coming your way in the cheat sheet. All right. The recording is going to be emailed to you. Here we go. Have you ever been bombarded by questions from parents at the beginning of the year? Any of you who've been at this rodeo before, let us know in the comments. Have you ever been bombarded by questions from parents at the beginning of the year? 
it is so hectic and stressful that you are bound to forget something crucial. If you really want to start the year off right, you must, must, must meet with the parents face to face because there is nothing more powerful than a face to face meeting because there is never enough time to answer all the questions parents have at the beginning of the year, especially in the youngest grades in preschool and kindergarten. So let me tell you a little story about what happened to me, and I know some of you are going to be able to relate to this. One year I had an especially hectic open house, okay? I mean, a million and one questions, and I forgot to tell the parents because I was so distracted. I forgot to tell the parents what time they should pick up their child. Yeah, uh-huh. Can you guess where I was at 5 p.m. on the first day of school? Yeah, so learn from my mistake and be so prepared that you will amaze them with your mind reading skills. They'll think this teacher knows her stuff, okay? True story. So after that year, I went in so prepared, there's no way I could not answer every single question. So even if you've already had your first day of school, it's never too late to meet with the parents and get everybody on the same page, start the year off right not a problem. So, you're going to meet the parents in person face to face to help ease the fear of the unknown for both the teacher and the parents. And what if they don't show up? Has anyone here ever had an event at school where not very many people showed up? And some of you probably have the opposite problem. That's okay too. If they don't show up, this is a problem, right? So don't make it an option. If you hold your event at 6 p.m., you know that not all parents are going to be able to attend. That's a given. So what you do is you offer your event at two different times to accommodate parents who have a different work schedule. So you offer it once during the day, like during a professional development day or your lunch or planning time, and hey, I know that's rough. That is rough. It's unfair. But it's an investment that's going to pay off big time in the long run. Then you offer it again in the evening. And this will help with overcrowding situations too. You can thank me later. This works wonders. So now you're going to have two of these. They choose which one they go to so they're less stressed. Okay? Everybody with me so far? You're going to meet every parent in person. I don't care if you started school or you haven't started back yet. Take the time to meet them in person. Okay, so what does that look like? Like, what does that look like? Okay, so you're going to, to meet all the learning styles of the parents during your super organized and highly effective face-to-face -face meeting because you're going to have a printable handbook with all the answers to their questions inside. That's for the visual learners. Okay, so you're going to have it printed out and they can take it with them. Okay. They can look at it for your visual learners. Then you're going to have a fabulous PowerPoint presentation that you review with parents in person that will answer all their questions. It, it goes with the, the handbook. They're basically the same. Only one um, goes home and one is shown on the screen. This is for your visual and your auditory learners. Okay. If you invest a little time up front preparing these two things at the beginning of the year, it will help the entire rest of your year go more smoothly, believe me. I know it all sounds like a lot of work, but I have some helpful resources you can use to help, okay? I've listed them in the cheat sheet that, I'll be sent, that we'll be sending out to all live viewers. So those resources are there. Now, for the kinesthetic learners, I know you're wondering, we covered the auditory learners and the visual learners. What about those kinesthetic learners? I suggest a little meet and greet scavenger hunt. This is super fun and gets kids and parents to meet each other and talk instead of standing around staring at each other. Have you ever noticed that? Like all of a sudden parents and kids become so shy. So I suggest doing this little scavenger hunt after you cover the important stuff so you can answer all the individual questions while the rest of the families are engaged in this fun game. So here's how the meet and greet with little kids goes, okay? Because you, your goal with this is to get parents and kids talking to each other. So make a super simple grid on a piece of paper 
and in each square you write things like find a classmate who's been on an airplane, find a classmate who has a dog, find a classmate who has a cat, find a classmate who has a brother, find a classmate who likes chocolate ice cream. This doesn't have to be fancy guys. Keep it simple, simple, simple. It's more about the activity and less about the cute printable. So I don't have a printable for this. I'm sure there'll be 80 million of them on, on Teachers Pay Teachers tomorrow. But this works. Parents will have to read the instructions on the sheet, of course, because the kids can't read. And the kids can ask the questions of each other, and of course, with scaffolding and support when necessary. The parent can write the name of the classmates in the appropriate boxes. So if Joey asks his friend Bobby or his new classmate if he's been on an airplane and Bobby says yes and then Joey says what's your name and the child says Bobby and then the parent writes Bobby on the um, on the grid there um, and then they can turn in their finished grids for some kind of prize fun times guys fun times so while they're off doing that you're answering those individual burning questions um, like Velcro or tie laces, things like that. And if you're doing snacks and door prizes, now is the time for those too. So I always do those, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But those are the three things that you're going to do to have a super organized and effective meet the teacher, parent night, open house, whatever you want to call it, okay? All right. So I know the beginning of the year brings a lot of paperwork. Show us in the chat box there if you have a lot of paperwork to do at the beginning of the year. There's a lot of collecting of papers. So one of the things that I have found really effective is ESGI's classroom management tool. It makes keeping track of all those pesky forms a thing of the past. Can I get an amen? Yeah, amen in the chat box, please. <laughs> Teachers have hours, to, they'll save hours and hours of time when they use the classroom management tool to organize and track all of those back to school forms. Things like emergency cards, transportation, don't even get me started on that one, uh-uh. Allergies, PTA, anything else your school throws your way. Even if this was the only thing that ESGI did, I would use it because of the hours and hours of time it saves you during the most stressful time of the year, back to school time. And this is another trick, okay? One thing you can do at your open house event is to have the students' names up all over the room because this is going to help parents feel more at ease when they see that their child is included in the classroom and you've taken the time to put their name up on the cubbies and the tables. You're showing parents that you care. And you'll also want, I'm sure you'll want, a name tag for every child that their parents put on them right there at the event. Then they can wear it again on the first day of school. Parents will love that you're so organized and you're so prepared and you're providing a name tag to keep their baby from getting lost. Guys, I used to make these things by hand. Does anyone remember that? Do you remember writing name tags by hand? It took forever. And then I started typing them in Word and I was like, yay! It was so much better, but I still had to type their names every time. And Whenever I got a new student, I had to remember to add them to the list and remove the ones that moved away and all that, but guess what, okay? This is a huge time saver, so listen up. With ESGI, you can instantly create all of that stuff, okay? You can create nameplates, cubby names, name cards, name tags, name it, you can make it. Um, so you're gonna wanna try that out. Uh, it's a single click of a button, and you can use the classroom management tool and choose from 11 of those school fonts. Um, all you have to do to use it is log into your ESGI account, select the classroom management tool from the top, and let ESGI do the rest. Okay, guys, so we're just going to do a quick review. I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So far, you've learned how to win over every parent with a simple postcard, even the parents who wanted their kid transferred out of your class, right? I'm sure that's never happened to you. You've learned how to harness the hidden power of phone calls to get parents on your team. And you've learned how to host an organized and effective open house event so you can meet all parents in person. 
coming up, we're going to have our questions and answers. There's some really good questions and answers in there because a thousand of you submitted them. Our prize package winners, remember those, those prize packages? We have four prizes and five, five prize packages containing all four prizes. And my number one tip for parent communications, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that, okay? And here, I would really like you to do me a favor. Can you do me a favor? What's that, remember that gold nugget we talked about? What's that one gold nugget that you will take away from this webinar so far that will change the way that you get parents on your team? Is there something that you've done, that you've learned so far? Just type your answer in the chat box, okay? And it's okay if um, you haven't got something spectacular yet because there's still a lot more to come. So we're only halfway through here, okay? All right, excellent. I see lots of good stuff coming in there. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so glad that this is help, going to be helpful to you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so I promised you questions and answers, so here they are. I want to thank you for all those wonderful questions you sent in. I'm going to answer a few of the most frequently asked questions now. And stay tuned for those prizes and my number one tip. Okay. So this one, I think I got about 15 to 20 people that asked this same question, okay? And the question was, what is the best way to communicate with parents? What is the best way? A lot of people have this question. So I want to remind you about the learning styles I talked about earlier. Remember those? The best way to communicate with anybody is to use their learning style. So for example, if you have a parent that's a visual learner and that person retains more information when they read something, then you're going to want to communicate with that parent in writing. If you have a parent that's an auditory learner and they respond best when talking to you, you're going to want to call them on the phone or speak with them face to face. So do you see what I'm getting at here? You can't just pick one method of communicating with all parents or you're going to exclude some. You have to use all the methods available to be inclusive of all the parents in your class, just like you use all different types of teaching methods to be inclusive of all the learning styles of the children in your classroom. You guys, can you hear my cat? She wants to say hi. Say hi, Sam. Yeah, she's not happy. Okay. So, what do you do if you only have five minutes and you don't have time to do all of these different things? Here's the trick. You ask them up front which method of communication they prefer. Have a space on one of those eight million forms they have to fill out that says something like, how would you prefer to communicate with your child's teacher? Phone call? Email? Text? Let them circle the one. Then use that info so you can contact them the way that they prefer. And somebody also asked if I knew of a way to text parents that keeps your phone number private. And the answer is yes, okay? I have used remind.com, remind.com. It's a free service teachers can use to communicate with parents through text, and it keeps your phone number private. You can check it out at remind.com. It's super easy, and parents and teachers alike love it. That's remind.com. And they don't know I said anything about them. It's just it's a service that, that I've used before. There are others out there that exist, and if you have another one that you use and you want to share it with everybody, let us know in the chat box. Okay, so parents love love, love to hear that you'll be communicating with them frequently f throughout the year. But where do you find all this time for communicating in addition to all the teaching that you're supposed to be doing, right? Okay, so here is a trick. With ESGI, you can instantly generate professionally written progress reports in English and Spanish. Using the data you collect during your one-on-one -on -one assessments, ESGI pulls that information and puts it into an easy-to-read, 
and understand format that you can just print and send home to keep parents informed of their child's progress. And so you can see here, this is an English one, but it also does Spanish. How nice is that? Let us know in the chat box if Spanish is helpful to you in your job. Um, so you can customize these too. So if you don't like the words that are at the top, if they don't meet your individual needs, you can fix that. You can change it on your master copy and then it will send that same one to everybody. So you, um, it, it, it basically tells parents how their children are doing. How many did they get right? Four out of six on the rhyming. Five out of six. These are using the um, kindergarten standards, common core standards, but you can have it do whatever test you're using. It will, it will communicate the child's progress to the parents. Very, very cool. You can download this as a PDF and send it as an attachment in an email. Um, you can print it out and do it the old-fashioned way. You can put these in children's portfolios to review with parents at conferences. Very, very helpful, okay? All right. You guys, you made it to the first prize package. All right. Here we go. It's time to announce winner one. If you're sitting near a table, make a drum roll. Everybody ready? My cat didn't like that. Okay. Each winner is going to receive a prize package that contains that one year of ESGI, a super helpful, helpful resource you can use to save 400 hours a year, an ESGI t-shirt, and a $75 gift certificate to Pre-K Pages, plus a copy of my book, A Fabulous First Year and Beyond. And Jenna is going to announce the first winner now. All right. Our first winner here of the prize package um, is Erin Hernandez. So, Erin, please uh, send an email to sam at esgisoftware.com, and I'm going to post this in the question box, um, and we'll, uh, we'll have your prize package sent out. Congratulations. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jenna. Yay. Congratulations to our first prize winner. Okay. We still have more questions and answers, though. Like I said, there was a thousand of you that submitted these. So, this is a question I got from several people. What are some strategies for getting parents to attend school functions? All right. I am so very glad you asked this question. This is something I struggled with, too. But over the years, I was able to figure out little tricks along the way to get parents to show up. I have a four-step, very simple process that will dramatically increase attendance at your school functions. Now, this is not on the cheat sheet, so you're going to want to grab a pencil, okay? So this is a four-step process to dramatically increase attendance at your school functions. Number one, an invitation. It's an invitation because it is a parte, okay? You are not having a school function. How boring does that sound? You are having an event, okay? Call it an event. Call it something fun. Don't call it a school function. It is a parte, and people who go to parte, they get invitations. All the cool people get invitations, and you can do those. You can use... Um, you know, something that your school comes up with, but I like to have the kids make personal invitations because that's the most effective. I still have the ones that come from the school, have the kids make personal invitations. Next, you're going to feed them. If you feed them, they will come, okay? All you have to do is say you're going to have snacks, okay? You didn't say what kind of snacks. You didn't say caviar on uh, toast. You said snack. That could mean anything. Popcorn's cheap, okay? I'm just saying going to have a snack, okay? That's going to motivate some of those dads to come, okay? Next, you're going to have prizes, and I know you're thinking, I got no money, and that's okay, because you didn't say these were Gucci bags, okay? You said prizes, and the prizes are for the children. What do little kids like? They like junk, okay? So, all those free stickers you get, you get free stickers, you get You've got trinkets, you've got stickers, you've got your Scholastic free books. Those are the things I put in the bag. So I'll put a Scholastic book in each bag. And I didn't say prizes for everyone, I just said prizes. We've only got five prizes for you guys today, and there's a thousand of you, okay? So do the math. Um, just have a few prizes. Put them in a cute bag, though. So you get those three packs of gift bags at the Dollar Tree. You got three prizes right there. Get out your stickers, get out your Scholastic books. Put those prizes in the bag and then add some tissue paper because you know if it has tissue paper, it's got to be better, right? And then you show those bags to the kids and you say, tonight, 
at the whatever, whatever party you're having, we're going to be giving out prizes and we're going to have snacks. And the last one is organized activities, and this is key. If you have one of those open houses where people just walk around and look at the wall, they're not coming back, okay? That is a surefire way to turn parents off. You want to have an organized activity, okay? I One time I had a, a dad who showed up because we were having open house, and he got off work early. He dressed in his Sunday vests, and he came to school, and it was one of those open houses where you look at the walls, and he was hopping mad. And guess what? I didn't blame him. You want something fun when you come to school. When you get off work early and you, get, you shower and you wear your Sunday vest, you want something in return for that. So if you want any help with any of these steps, I have some family literacy night kits that I created to help. Um, they have everything you need to help plan for, organize, and hold a successful event at school. And there's a link to those resources in the cheat sheet, um, or you can search pre-K pages for family night, but those are the four steps to get parents to attend your school functions. And drum roll, now it's time for prize package winner number two. And don't forget, if you're the winner, you're going to email Sam, S-A-M, at ESGISoftware.com. Jenna, let's find out who prize package winner number two is. All righty, drum roll please. Uh, the winner of number two is Dawn DeRose. Ooh, very nice. Email Sam at ESGISoftware.com. Apparently I can't post, but I put it in the answer column. <laughs> so look for that there. Yeah. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, here is another question that I received. Quick tips for parent-teacher conferences. Um, again, this is an excellent question. As a teacher, I found parent-teacher conferences to be so extremely time-consuming and exhausting. It was overwhelming and frustrating and just not pleasant. So over the years, I perfected my parent conference recipe. Here are some of my best tips for holding successful parent conferences. Okay, guys, the secret is in the schedule. Okay, the secret is in your schedule. You have to budget the right amount of time. If you budget too little time, you're going to have parents waiting. Nothing makes a parent angrier than having to wait. Just think about carpool line, if any of you can relate, okay? Your schedule is key. Budget the right amount of time. So know how long it's going to take you, and then make your schedule accordingly. You're going to want to spend time preparing. Conferences are just, aren't just something you sit down and do. You're going to need to have some form of preparation in place. So I pull everything I'm going to need for my conferences so I'm not running around the room saying, oh, hold on just a second. Let me get this. I need to grab that. I need a pen. I have everything in a bucket, in a tub, you know, a dish tub, ready to go um, for today's conferences so I don't have to get up. And I also have a clock in there. I'm old school. I've got a clock right there so that both the parent and I see it. They know their scheduled time, so it helps. Have their child's portfolio there. You're always going to want to show parents actual work that children are doing in school. So I have a portfolio filled with that child's work to back up anything that you have to say. And now one thing about working with little kids that some of you already know is that parents have a lot of questions, and those questions that they have are not always necessarily related to the classroom. I've had many questions about how to get my child to go to sleep at night, how to get my child to eat vegetables, help with potty training, you name it, I've been asked it. Now, if you're a super parent yourself, then you can share um, you know, ideas right off the top of your head, but if you need help, gather those resources first, have that available for when parents ask you these questions or if you think it might be helpful for some. Um, so I print all this information off. I just use Google. I find it. I print it off, and I put it in like one of those cheap folders. And so if they have a question, I say, oh, I have an answer for you right here, and I open up the folder and turn right to the page. And then I say there's more helpful stuff in here. Take it with you and read it when you get home. That's your homework, mom or dad. Um, they love those. Um, reminders, you're going to want to remind people. Think about your doctor's office. Does your doctor call you to remind you that you have an appointment? Yes. Um, 
think about all the places you go where they remind you that you have an appointment. The same is true for school. Remind people they're busy. Okay? You use reminders and your attendance rate will go up. Follow up, I always, always follow up with a thank you to anyone who attended conferences. So you're always going to want to follow up, whether it's an email or um, whatever, whatever method that parent prefers would probably be the best way to do it. And here's my secret, super special tip. It's the picture on the screen there. Have a waiting room. Okay, because you can have the best schedule in the world, but if the parents don't show up on time, you're going to get backed up. So have a place for parents to wait with something for them to do. So I created this little, um, it's like a little book with all the kids' pictures in it. I did it like on Snapfish or Shutterfly or one of those sites. And I put pictures of the kids in the classroom in there, and they're really professional looking. I had a free coupon for one because I use those kind of sites all the time. And I made one for my class, and then I had all the kids sign it, and I put it outside the door with a little note that says, you know, read this. And I put some work on the wall, the kids' work. Um, I put the different things out there to keep them busy in case something happened and I was running late. Um, so it's like a little yearbook, if you want to call it that. But parents absolutely love looking at this while they wait. You can see it's very well-loved. Do you see it's all, like, yucky over here on the edges? <laughs> it's well-loved. Okay. All right. So, speaking of parent conferences, the ESGI Parent Conference Tool can help you schedule conferences, print professional letters and reminder notes. It can basically help you organize your conferences. Um, so, you can see here it's creating a schedule for you. It does all this really cool stuff. Um, it's really, it really transforms the way we do things in our classroom. So, I encourage you to check that out. It's time for prize package number three. And each member, each winner receives the entire prize package on the screen. If you want, if you win, don't forget to email Sam at esgisoftware.com. Take it away, Jenna. All righty. Winner number three is Paul Zito. Paul Zito. Um, so email Sam at esgisoftware.com. Congrats. Thank you, Jenna. Wonderful. And here is, I believe this is one of the last questions we have before we get to my number one tip here. How do you get parents to actually read the things that you send home? Ah, uh, yes. This is tricky, isn't it? So let me know in the chat box if you have ever had trouble getting parents to read things that you sent home. Mm-hmm. I thought so. Okay, I have two strategies I've used with great success, okay? Um, newsletters, and th these can go digital now, so don't worry about that. Um, the secret to getting your newsletter read, because this was one of the questions I got, was how do you get parents to read the newsletter? You have to break the text up into little bite-sized chunks, okay, because parents are busy, okay? You're busy, parents are busy. If there is a long, long, long thing for them to read, they are not going to read it. So let them know at your open house what day you're going to send this home, whether it's once a month or once a week. Let them know how important it is that they read it. Give it a cute name, but break up that text, add pictures, do whatever you can to make it short and sweet, okay? My other trick is the communication notebook. I use these notebooks in my classroom because I never, ever and I will say it again, I will never, ever send anything home in that black hole, otherwise known as the backpack, okay? Because I, I learned very early on, and some of you may know this too, let us know in the chat if this has ever happened to you, anything that goes in the backpack will never be seen again <laughs> So until the last day of school when you're cleaning out the backpack. So that's when I started using communication notebooks. The trick to making these work, because I've had some people say, well, it didn't work for me. The trick is to introduce these to parents in person. I never send anything home in the backpack, including the communication folder, until I've introduced it in person and explained the purpose for it and how it works. So I set the expectation at my open house, meet the teacher, whatever you want to call it, and I let the parents know that it's a tool for communicating with the teacher. It's not a toy. And these don't need to go home on the first day of school, y'all. They don't need to go home on the first day. I actually wait a few weeks because they take a lot of time to put together, and sorry, but I don't have a lot of time. And they don't need to start going home right away. 
Um, so I let them know the first day that it's going to be coming home and to look for it in the backpack. And nothing ever goes in the backpack. It only goes into the communication notebook. And somebody else asked about getting parents to help their kids at home. So now we've learned about how to use the communication notebook and a newsletter commu to communicate. Um, but getting parents to help kids at home, all parents want to help their kids. Not every parent knows how. doesn't matter what socioeconomic level they're at. Many affluent parents are helping their children inappropriately by doing worksheets at home, and other parents just don't have the skills to help their kids at home. So I love, love, love the printable practice cards that ESGI can generate. Did they have them? Nope, sorry. Um, it automatically generates practice cards based on the individual student test scores that are specific to each student. How cool is that? Print them on colored cardstock, laminate, hole punch, and place them on a book ring and put them in your communication notebook after you've introduced them to the parents. All right, Jenna, take it away. Your winner is going to email Sam at ESGISoftware.com. All righty. Uh, winner number four, uh, Betsy and Misano. Congratulations. All righty. You're going to email Sam to get your prize. Sam at ESGISoftware.com. Okay, guys. We're coming up on my number one tip. Stay with us here. So here's what you get with ESGI. You can create custom assessments. So if you have a specific assessment that you use, you can create custom assessments in ESGI. You can share your assessments with your colleagues, um, with your school, with your whole district. You can generate reports instantly of all the kids in your, school, in your classroom's progress. You get those personalized parent letters and practice cards I talked about. Your administrators can access all the data. Of course, you can schedule those parent conferences, use that classroom management tool for those name cards and those name tags, and of course, the always awesome rock star customer support at ESGI. And here's the bonus that you get for being on the live call with us today. You're going to get access to, um, if you sign up for ESGI, you get access to the pre-made custom assessments, okay? And so those are assessments that people like myself, friends of ESGI, have created. So my pre-K pages assessments are now on ESGI, available to those who would like to subscribe to ESGI. So all the pre-K pages is on there. Everyone on the call today is going to get my free ebook. Seven Pre-K Teaching Hacks. These also apply to kindergarten. You're going to get this presentation in a PDF for you to download and print. Share it with your staff. Yes, you get it. You get that printable cheat sheet that I talked about with all those, um, those scripts. You get your certificate of attendance that's coming to you via email. You're going to get the 60-day free trial of ESGI. And if you would like to purchase the SGI, you're going to get a promo code for $40 off your first year. Does that sound good to anybody? Those are your bonuses for being on the live call today. All right. And as a very special bonus, I wanted to reach out and make this offer to you. If you decide to purchase ESGI to save time in your classroom this year and you make your purchase in the next seven days, send your receipt to me at that email address on the screen right there, and I'll give you a $25 gift certificate, $25 gift certificate to my store, Pre-K Pages, okay? So it has to be purchased within the next seven days, then you shoot me an email, okay? Yeah, you have seven days to make up your mind. Um, of course, you can always purchase it after that, um, but you're not going to get this extra special bonus just for the people on the call today, okay? so. Let's review some of the questions and answers that I've been over um, with you so far. We talked about the best way to communicate with parents, how to get parents to attend your school functions. Remember, they're not school functions. They are a parte, okay? Quick tips for parent conferences and how to get parents to read what you send home. Stay tuned for our very last prize package winner and my number one tip. All right. Um, and this here, um, this is uh, the ESGI homepage here. Here's how, here's how you get your free trial. So if you want to check this out for 60 days, you can use it for free. Um, you're going to go to TeachersSaveTime.com. TeachersSaveTime.com. Sign up for your 60-day free trial by clicking on that orange button there down at the bottom. There is no credit card necessary for the free trial. So if you decide it is not for you, um, it's not going to charge you anything. 
And if you do decide to purchase it, um, you can use the promo code PREK PAGES to save $40 off your very first year. Okay, so if you add that 40 and you do it in the next seven days, you add that to the $25, do the math, and so you have a big savings there. Okay. Prize package number five, we're getting very close to the end. Remember, winner is going to email Sam at ESGISoftware.com. Take it away, Jenna. All righty. Um, last but not least winner, Janice Chapman. Congratulations. Janice, Oh, congrats. and I do want to say, um, I, I said uh, the very first name incorrectly. Aaron Henderson was the first uh, winner. Aaron Henderson. Got and it. Chapman was the most recent winner. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, guys. Here we go. Are you ready for the number one tip? Let's have a drum roll. All right. Give parents a script to follow, too. Okay, we've already established that parents are just as nervous as teachers on the first day of school, right? So sometimes parents are nervous about sending their child to school because they might not have had a positive school experience themselves or they may feel that their parenting skills will be judged by teachers or other parents. So this problem cuts across all socioeconomic levels. Parents are parents, and they're all scared to send their children to school, period, end of story. And they don't mean to do it, but some of them end up scaring their child and even threatening them, which makes for a very stressful and tear-filled first day. So I've had parents who spent so much time reminding their kids to behave, raise your hand, sit down, wait your turn, wipe your bottom, before the first day of school that by the time the kids finally got there, they thought this place called school must be like jail. Who wants to go to jail? Not me, and neither do the kids. So we're going to give the parents the words they need to talk to their kids about school in a positive way. Not all parents need this, but it cannot hurt for all of them to hear it. So here's the script that I use, okay? This, these are the words I give the parents. You know how sometimes you need to give kids words when they're apologizing or solving problems? We're going to do the same with parents. So here's the script. You're going to love school. You're going to make friends, play, sing, dance, paint, and so much more. Play it up, people. Make it sound like a fun place to go and not jail. And, of course, your script needs to match what you will actually be doing in the classroom. But I assume, since you're here on the call with us today, that you teach little kids, and these are things that we need to be doing in all early childhood classrooms. So, so make your own script. You're going to give it to the parents and tell them to use it with their children. So if all kids come to school on the first day thinking it's going to be a fun place and it's not a jail, you're going to have a better success rate. So, I just want to remind everybody, uh, I want to thank you for coming and remind you that you're going to be receiving a certificate for attending this live call today. Um, check your email inbox for your certificate in just a few days. And I did want to remind you, don't forget to go to TeachersSaveTime.com to sign up for your free trial of these amazing time-saving resources from ESGI. And if you have any questions, you can email me at the address on the screen. Or you can tweet me at Pre-K Pages and use the hashtag Teachers Save Time. Thank you so very much to everybody that was on the live call today. I hope you got some great gold nuggets you can take back and use in your classroom right away to make your year better and communicate and connect with parents. Thanks, guys. Bye.